up and say a few words to you, Ida. Um, now, we're going to start with... Uh, just, just one. Well, no, no. Just I have one. to tell you. One, <laughs> one, one. You may say one, but I have to tell you something. We have one, one who's also very close to us as well. Risa Newman uh, is, uh, you know, some, who's very close to the congregation for Israel, as, as you all are, but who has been here many times. And so, without further ado, come on up. Ladies and gentlemen, Risa. Hi, everyone. I'm Risa. I'm Ida's niece. We're like a daughter, I'd like to think. And thank you all for being here to honor my aunt. She is truly worthy of being honored. My aunt raised me basically from the time I was 20. My aunt talk, talked me into getting my first job at Irene's on the boardwalk when I was 13 years old. <laughs> I was with her son and I was stammering over my words and my aunt actually had them hire me. As I got older, my aunt guided me, insisted that I went to law school. Then when I was studying in law school and studying for my boards, she would call me to tell me stories about Leon and Fran and the Rabba <laughs> and Gail and this one and that one and all the tours she gave at Mikva Israel and how long it took her to commute and on and on the, and the, the tablecloths she would take home to wash. Yes, my aunt brought home tablecloths from Mikva Israel to wash them. She is the most devoted person I know. She absolutely loves the synagogue. She loved nothing more than sharing her lunch with Rabbi Gabbai. <laughs> and she absolutely loved to tell me when I would call to make a donation how to write out the donation card. I couldn't just say in honor of or in memory of, I had his name the yes. person. <laughs> and Ida, we have all learned so much from you. you had me join the synagogue, you have me join this beautiful community. I've made wonderful friends, great relationships, and you are everyone's best friend, and we love you. And thank you so much for being here and for guiding all of us. My name is Joel Pomerantz. I am Ida Pomerantz's son. I'm a geriatrician. I practice in Philadelphia. And as a geriatrician, I frequently encounter patients in their 60s who tell me that they are retiring. And I ask them, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And they always say, oh, I have lots of plans. A year later, they are usually bored and looking for things to do. My mother did quite the opposite. She continued working well into her 80s. She loved her work. She enjoyed greeting new visitors to Mikva Israel with a smile. She especially loved showing off the beautiful Aaron Kodesh, and she filled while showing off all the pictures of her family in her office. She also loved the closeness of the Sparta community. <coughs> this week, we began the second book of the Torah, and it starts with the Elo Shemot. The letter Vav joins the finishing of the first book, Reishi, with the beginning of the second book. Mom, you finished your work here. Your work kept you strong and young and always excited to learn new Spartan traditions and customs. But now, it is the beginning of a new journey, a new chapter in your life. When we finished the book of Genesis of Reishi, we ended with the powerful words, Chazak, Chazak beneath Chazik which means strong, strong, and we should continue to be strengthened, reflecting on the past and looking forward to the bright future. Mom, on this day, I would like to give you 
the bracha of continued strength, nachas from your family, and God willing, continued help. Ad may have asked for my While we're being served the main meal, I withheld from saying something about the parasha because I figure I didn't want to steal someone's uh, Devar Torah. But I am compelled to remind you that this Torah portion spoke of two wonderful women. And they were the, um, the doulas, if you will, of the Jewish uh, people. Um, and Shifla and Hua took the Jewish people, literally by hand, and carried the day by continuing the Jewish people and continuing the enterprise. The two women in our office, um, Ida and Gail, I think, are like Adai. Well, this is Gail. <laughs> Why are you crying? I'm not crying. You know that we have three cemeteries. Our cemetery in 8th and Spruce, which is our revolutionary period uh, cemetery, uh, which is completely filled, by the way, except for two spots that we have available if I remove two trees for $2 million. Thank you. <laughs> and, well, by act of Congress, it is a historic uh, um, uh, a site. And so it'll always exist as these United States exist. That's something to say. Uh, our 11th and Federal Cemetery, which is the Civil War Cemetery that we have, and 54th and, uh, and Washington, and I have to tell you that if there's someone who gave dignity every day to making sure that it was painted, that it was, that the lawn was mowed, and, 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 the, gra and the, the, the snow and ice, and everything that went into it, and helping the Parnassim, it, it is definitely um, the office uh, girls, of course, Ida, um, you've done so much. Um, at this point, I'd like to call the person who has worked very much to put this together. I will tell you that on the technical and, and, and everyday act of putting this evening together and who manages what we have today is to my left, Shana Golda. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Snyder, who's in the kitchen right now, but we will tell him that we thank him. Ladies and gentlemen, let's thank him. He's a volunteer. Together with his staff, thank you for putting this evening together. And I'd like to call the other person who worked very much to put this evening together, and that is Carolyn Vassal. Come on up. Now I'm told that this is a roast, so put on a smile, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is, Carolyn Vassal. What about me? I'd like to thank Constantine hey. over here, who's our photographer, and our uh, member, of course, for many years. Come on up. Dear Ida, for selfish reasons, we were hoping that this day would never come. Your retirement is a clear reminder to all that all good brains are temporary. How often you said, even the President of the United States can be replaced. Maybe so, but there is no way of replacing the love and overall emotional connection we all have with you, making your retirement bittersweet. Hence the reason I personally prefer to remain in a state of blissful denial rather than facing today's eventual reality. How do you replace a caring mother figure who selfishly devotes so much time and effort for the good of all of her congregants and the synagogue at large? Our boys will miss running over to you with a kiss and a hug as they are accustomed when visiting Mikvah Israel, as will David and I. You never fail to inquire over every detail of their lives with the care and concern of a dear grandmother. How I vented to you as a mother myself when I hit some child-rearing stumbling blocks. 
You never failed to come up with motherly words of wisdom that always made me feel better. You and Gail were like the dynamic duo. Synagogue business and office therapy rolled into one. <laughs> Everyone here today has their own personal story about you that is near and dear to their heart, making you an 